In this video, I want to give you guys the tutorial on how to generate your histograms in case you uh, have never had to do this before. Uh, there, there can be just a little bit of a learning curve here, so I want to make sure that we uh, get this addressed for you guys. Um, so I uh, just went ahead and um, uh, randomly generated, I used the Excel uh, random number generator to, to give me 30 random numbers. I didn't take the time to actually roll dice uh, as I'm expecting you guys to. Uh, but now that I'm thinking about this, I may want to do one thing first. And that is, let me copy and paste these values so that they're static. And as you can see, my values change. So when you type random numbers into Excel, anytime you do things in other cells, um, it generates a new set of those random numbers. So I want to keep my numbers static. So that's why I did what I just did here. Um, and then let me just cancel. Let's delete these two columns. Okay, so I have my random numbers, and these represent dice. And as you can see, these range from um, 2 up to 12, just like your measurements, your measurements should. Okay, so we've got this. Um, so what I want to do, okay, what I want to do is use the histogram generator to be able to collate and look at my data um, in a fairly organized fashion, and that's that's the whole point of the histogram. Okay, um, to do so, what you want to do is um, most of the time you're going to be in this home menu. Okay, you're going to be in the home menu. If you need to plot things like scatter plots, it's in the charts here. Okay, this is in the charts, but that's not what we want. Okay, to get the histogram, you want to come up here to your data tab, right? And then over in the far right corner, you should have this data analysis button. And once you hit that button, this menu should come up, and you'll notice that histogram is one of the options. All right now, some of you might be freaking out right at this particular moment because you might not see this data analysis button. So what do I have to do to get this data analysis button to appear? To do so, what you want to do is come over here to file, all right? Come over here to file and go all the way down here to options. And once this options menu is open, what you want to do is click on add-ins and come down here to the manage button and it'll say Excel add-ins and click go. And then this menu should crop up and the histogram is in the analysis tool pack. So as long as that box is checked, there's really no reason not to check all four of these. Um, but for our purposes, the, the histogram, the data analysis tool is in the analysis tool pack. So as long as that box is checked and you click OK, then you should have access to this data analysis button. Okay, so once that button is available, we want to click on it and come up here to histogram. All right. Okay, now we've got a couple of boxes. So this input range. All right, the input, and I'm actually gonna have to cancel out of this because I'm. Uh, uh, I wanted to show you guys how to get into it, but there's one more step we need to do to actually generate this. All right, uh, but I wanted to tell you guys what this was and then go back and do it all right so my input range first my input range is the data that I'm actually going to be putting into the histograms all right is the actual data itself the bin range okay so what a histogram does is it takes a set of data and separates it into bins based on values so in our case, we're going to separate our bins into values, um, the values 2 through 12, right? Um, this is rarely how histograms are actually done in practice, where you actually have discrete integer values. Um, if uh, I wanted to take, you know, say average shoe sizes, uh, we would definitely have to take into account half inches and, and figure out how to do that. Uh, so this is this is a bit of a rare circumstance where I'm actually going to be able to take um, 
just discrete values like this. Uh, so I'm going to cancel this. Um, but our bin values, what we want to do is analyze how many twos we have, how many threes we have, how many fours we have, and I think you get the point now, right? So five, and then I can click and drag this all the way up to 12. So what this is going to do, right, what this histogram function is going to do is it's going to take your data that you specify and then separate that data into these bins. So for every time that a two appears in uh, your data set, it's going to add that two to the bin of two, right? So I should have in my two bin one, two, three, I should get a value of three for my two bin. And then my three bin would just be the number of threes that appear. My four bin would be the number of fours that appear and so on. Okay. Um, so now that I've got my bin range, I'm going to add that, right? Now you've got a few options here. You can have it appear in a new worksheet, which is just typically what I do. So everything's clean. Um, or you could specify where you want the chart to appear on your uh, current page. But I always just say, all right, let's just add a new page here. So, and I also want to make sure that I click chart output. So that way I can actually see said histogram, right? So click OK. <coughs> And here we go. Here you have your histogram. Now, um, this looks nothing like a bell curve, right? And in fact, the number seven, which ought to be the most frequent of any number rolled, um, doesn't have very much, especially compared to five and six. Um, so one of the things that you can conclude from this, uh, one of two things, right? Either over short and small intervals, Randomness really is truly that random, even if when you're rolling dice right now, one one difference between this random number generator and your dice is this takes all numbers into equal probability, whereas your dice does not. Right. Uh, there are ways that I could change that. It's a little bit easier to do in a computer program like, say, um, uh, Python. Uh, but in any case, right. But in any case. I can um, generate the data and I can plot it in the in the histograms this way, right? So what what you should see, okay? What you should see is that especially for your uh, first two trials, you're probably going to see a lot of randomness, and you'll probably see uh, a, a good deal of randomness in your last trial. But you might start to see this five, six, and seven really start to peak out, um, peak up above the rest. That's what you should see. All right. Um, what should almost definitely be true, even if you don't get a peak at the number seven as expected, even if you don't get that peak, what should be true is that if you add up the numbers of five, six, and seven, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not five, six, and seven, but six, seven, and eight. Um, those numbers should overwhelmingly dwarf the other uh, numbers, right? You should you should have far more six, sevens, and eights uh, by the time you get to sixty rolls uh, than any other set of numbers. So, um, if nothing else, that is something you should see that that central bulge starts to form, right? But that's how you generate your histograms, okay? That is how you can generate your histograms in Excel. Uh, and so if you were unfamiliar with that technique, I hope you found this useful. Um, and we will talk to you guys next time. All right, have a good one.